Essendon assistant coach Blake Carousella will on Sunday take charge of a Bombers side looking to win its first game of the season against Adelaide. Senior coach Ben Rutten will have to watch an enormously important game for his side from the couch at home. Essendon's general manager of football is Josh Marnie. Josh, welcome. Thanks for your time this morning. G'day, Sam. Yeah, different circumstances this weekend, but um, these are the sort of contingencies we, we worked through at the start of the year, so we got a plan in place and just have to roll that out now. Another one for the close contact uh, critics. I'm not going to lure you into a politics, uh, Josh, but Ben's tested negative, but he's a household contact. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, it's, um, yeah there is quite a few cases, obviously, still around the community. We have to remain diligent in that area, and we, you know, we've got rules around um, you know, what guys have to do before they come into the hangar. Um, some rules about making some good decisions in their lifestyles to try and limit the spread. Um, and, yeah, it's just an unfortunate circumstance with, with truck this week. We've seen it with Carlton. Fremantle are doing it again this week as well. I mean, going in without a senior coach, how will your club handle it? Yeah, we're, we're fortunate. We've got you know, three experienced assistant coaches and Blake Carousella will step up to be the senior coach on the day. Daniel Jean Syracuse and, and Dale Tapping as well. Um, Ben's able to have access to you know, some communication through the coach's box and also some vision. So he'll still be able to communicate to the coaches within the coach's box and he'll be watching it from home. So yeah, we've, you know, the AFL have worked through that setup. Uh, the other clubs have done it before um, previously and it's it's worked well from discussions we've had with them. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes on Sunday. And how has Ben handled it? I've got to ask you that. I mean, can you give us an insight into his makeup here, given that the side is, you know, obviously you don't need me to tell you zip and three, everything in his entire being would be to take more control, not less. How has he handled the, the situation this week? Yeah, there's been a bit of FOMO um, from, from Ben um, this week. You know, obviously, it was also, it's been a long week, so it was a great, great opportunity to get some uh, good training sessions into the guys. That's almost two main sessions this week, so a good opportunity to work on some parts of our game that we need to work on. But he's got a lot of trust in the assistant coaches. He's been zooming into meetings and uh, making sure he stays on top that way, speaking to a lot of players over the phone, and then just trusting the assistant coaches to get coaching done, which uh, get the training done, which they've done really well, and so- really well prepared for this week's game. So on Sunday, on game day, how involved do you anticipate he'll be during the cut and thrust of it all? I think then we'll let Blake uh, sit in the chair and we've adjusted a few roles around what Blake generally does. Um, so he will be the senior coach for the day and then Ben will just have you know, audio into the box, you know, most likely to talk directly to me at different stages and, and we'll pass on any information that he's seeing. But he certainly wants to uh, let Blake coach the team. Um, obviously things won't change too much from what we've been doing um, mm. in in the way we're trying to play the game. So, yeah, we think it'll work quite well just having another voice coming from, um, you know, the limitations of what Ben's going to have. Obviously, it's a, it's a big organisation, bigger than any one individual, but we are talking about the senior coach. So does it does it make a challenging time for the club even more challenging? I think it was at the start of the year we spoke about all these different circumstances that might happen. There's going to be times we might be missing players, um, multiple players might be really late just the day before the game. so um, And then we spoke about different personnel um, missing as well. So the senior coach being being one of them. So I think the main thing, and most clubs did this pretty well, is be really well planned um, for whatever scenario pl- plays out. And yes, it's not ideal, but um, when we announced it to the players the other day, it was just, this is what's going on, and, mm. and we just roll into the plan that we had. We're pretty well conditioned at the moment, aren't we? Is there, is there an alibi, Josh, in the start to the season for your side? I mean, Geelong was disappointing in, in its performance, but to then have Brisbane and Melbourne off the back of it, obviously two sides who are well and truly contending at the moment. Oh, they're both very good sides, and they, they make you uh, hurt whenever you, you make errors, and they certainly, they certainly did to that. Um, but also, we're not quite playing our best footy at the moment as well. Uh, we've played some, some good footy in, in patches. Um, there's areas of our game that... They've slowly got better. I think our midfield and our stoppage work got better over the last two weeks. Uh, we have to keep improving our defence. Um, it's, a, it's a work in progress still for us. But, yeah, you're right. In playing the two best teams, they show up all your weaknesses, and they've done that. And I think the important part from that is that we, we learn those lessons from those games, go to change a few things, modify a few things, and make sure that you know, the last 19 games of the home and away season, we've um, taken these learnings from this you know, tough start of the three teams we've played. Yeah, so the Cats game aside, you think there are signs there that you're, that you're turning the corner? Oh, there's signs in, in games. I mean, when you look at it, both teams were probably in front or close to the front and during the third quarter of both those, both those games and, and played you know, periods of, of really strong footy. Um, and that's the main thing that the coach showing that that strong part of the game we have been playing, which keep building on that, um, it hasn't been for long enough and good teams make you pay. Um, so we've got to make sure this this week against Adelaide, we're aiming for a, 
four quarter effort. And I think if we do that four quarter effort and play our way for four quarters, we'll be in most games. And we're speaking to Essendon GM of football, Josh Marnie. Josh, I've got to ask you about Peter Wright, who has been a positive in a, in a challenging first three weeks for the side. I mean, given you gave up little to get him in, I mean, the Suns are contributing a bit to his wage, which isn't unusual, but it's a, it's a fact here. So to have him performing the way he is up forward must be a real positive for you. Yeah, I think particularly when you looked at it, what our forward line would look like at the start of the year and, and what it has been, uh, there's a lot of personnel missing out of our forward line. And he's really had to be the, the main man in these games. And it's really credit to Pete in the end. He's uh, had a good pre-season. He trains really hard in his game. He's been working hard on his marking and his footwork. And probably even the last two weeks, he's played on Harris Andrews and, and Stephen May and mm. performed the way he has. So, yeah, he's taken another um, step in the right direction about the player he wants to be. And we look forward to building some more support around him and, and watching him continue to grow. Just on some of that missing personnel and support, you'd ideally love to have him uh, around him in your best 22. I mean, Harry Jones has been missed, obviously. Very promising young player. Is he getting close, Josh? He's not too far away, is he? Yeah, he's getting close. Yeah, I think he'll play a game probably next week. Uh, most likely, given the amount of time he's missed, he'll be mm. through the VFL. But he's made some good progress, um, uh, so he's not too far away. Speaking of the VFL, Anthony McDonald Tim and Woody showed some nice touch down there last week, I think out at Casey Fields. I mean, how long, though, until he gains the match conditioning required does the club anticipate? Yeah, it was great for um, him to be out there, and he did contribute really well to the team. And they played probably 60% of the game, so it's probably three, three or four weeks away from some really getting you know, the match fitness required for AFL level. But a good step in the right direction for him to be out playing footy and uh, really contributing and, and see a smile on his face. He nearly kicked the winning goal after the siren. It would have been a bit of a Cinderella story. Um, but, yeah, it was great for him to be out there, as it was for, for Zach Reed, who missed a lot of footy, and he played uh, 50% of a game as well, so he'll build up this week as well. So a couple of guys uh, coming back in the next... Can I ask you about Sam Draper? I, I, uh, obviously, last week uh, raised eyebrows, a performance, admittedly against top-shelf opposition in, in Max Gorn and Luke Jackson. But where Sam Draper's at, obviously, a lot of excitement and anticipation around his season this uh, this year. He'd be disappointed with last week. What, what, where's he at? Is he playing hurt at the moment, Josh, or just one of those days? Yeah, I think it's just a reminder that he's only a 20-game player mm. and he's going to have days where he's going to get beaten by a better opposition. Um, you know, we tried to build a bit more support around him Last week, bringing Andrew Phillips in and playing two rucks. And it's a big role for, for a young ruckman to be taking on. Um, so he's still learning the game. Uh, he's still going to have challenges every, every week, but he's showing some good signs. And you know, the key thing is what he when he sits down and, and writes after his game about what he learned from playing on Max Gorn and Luke Jackson, that he um, takes that into the next game. So we're looking forward to him bouncing back. Doesn't look like the sort of player that would, uh, the disappointment would linger for long. He's a pretty resilient sort of a figure, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he's such a uh, competitive guy, and um, like a lot of players. And after the first three weeks, um, they're not happy with where we're at when you look at the ladder. But um, you know, we have to keep showing them that there's some positives coming out of the start of the season, and they have to keep, stay confident and and make sure that we um, you know, go into this week's game really well prepared. Just a couple more on personnel, if you don't mind. Is the expectation Nick Cox, Aaron Francis w- would be good to go next week? Yeah, I think that's where it's tracking at the moment. Uh, we still got we play Sunday, so we get our main training session today. Um, if both those guys get through main training, we'll have a decision to make, but it's probably tracking that way at this stage. Mm. Um, it wouldn't be an interview if I didn't ask you about Michael early, so forgive me. He's getting there, though, we understand. Save for a little calf uh, niggle a while back. Yeah, I mean, there's, in some ways, there's positives. He's doing a soft tissue injury. Yeah. Means he's back and training and running and, and getting around and, and a bit of normality, but, um, yeah, it's just um, just pushing the... the delaying um, him coming back really but he's put a big block of training in he's super fit and yeah hopefully it's not too far away Josh best of luck for Sunday appreciate you joining us thanks Sam good morning, mate.